Hi and welcome. In this video we're going to look at the basics of setting up a database specifically for accounting purposes in Excel. So the first thing you're going to do is open a brand new Excel sheet. So I'm just going to click anywhere in my desktop, right click, new Excel worksheet, name it database or companies. Let's get my spelling right of the name. Let me just move it to where I can see it easier. So I double click the newly created Excel sheet. This is going to hold our database. So all the, all the database is, is it's an unlimited number of connecting tables that connect each other to create any report you need. So let me just give you an example. Let me just create some tables here quickly. Let's just make a table here, select the area, control L, click OK. Let's open another table and another sheet. Same thing, control L, click OK, and make a third one. Control L, click OK. Alright, so this is this is how you this is the start of your database. But also the most important thing to do, you, you always name your, because a database, each table has its own specific use. So example, one will be for employees only, one will be for only for bank statements, one will only be for general ledger codes, for example. But when you're running a proper data, this is only going to have three tables for this introductory video. It's nothing to have a hundred tables that are connecting to each other. So let's just recap, so each a database is made up of these tables that each connect to each other and each column has also got its own use. So it must either only be date or only be name or only be surname and must also have its own data type. So you must specify everything before you do anything. So we've opened our first table. So let's say this is going to be our general ledger code. So rename the sheet, rename general ledger codes and vital also rename the table. So you go to table design Click inside the table, table design, just name it the same, general ledger codes. I spelled this sheet wrong, let's just go and copy this name here. That's another thing, your mindset always on a database must be to copy and paste wherever you can. So I'm copying this now, right click, rename, paste, so it's the same name. First column on any table is always ID. And it's always a whole number. Control 1, number, zero decimal places. So this is going to be our general ledger code. So we're going to have categories. Category 1. Could be category 2, 3, 4. And then the general ledger code itself. General ledger name itself. General ledger. Alright, so we've set up data types, we've set up the first one, category, all these are going to be text, so you can select them all, control 1, text. Alright, so that's our first table ready for upload to the data model. So to upload it to the data model, you click anywhere inside the table, go to power pivot, add to data model. So now you've got the data view, so you go to diagram view, because we named it on our sheet, it's got the proper name here, that's why you must rename your, your table, and here's your first table already on your Excel data model, so let's go and do the next one. So let's say the next one's going to be our names table, so let's just go and rename it, names, copy the name, let's just rename and copy the name. Control copy, click inside the table, table design, table name, control V to paste it. The our next table is named. Always ID the first column, always a whole number type, control one, number, whole number. This will just be just to say this is just name, it's going to be text. 
Let's just delete the other columns. We're not going to need them for now. You can always add them later. Your database will update automatically with extra columns. So control save to save it. Let's add this one to the data model. Click anywhere inside your table. Make sure it's named. Your sheet's named. You've named your column headers with names that are that make sense for each column. You've set your data type. Now you add it to the data model. Power pivot. Add to data model. There you've got two tables now. Your names and the general ledger codes. Go to diagram view. There our database is taking shape. We've got two of hundreds of tables we'll eventually have. Close here. Let's go and do our third one. This this will be the let's name it the bank statements. So this is where you'll copy your bank statements exactly from downloaded from the internet. So what you do the first column is always ID. Select it all, control one, the whole number always on every single table in your life. What you're gonna have from the from your bank statement, you're gonna have a date, you're gonna have a memo, you're gonna have an amount, and you're going to have a balance. Okay, so the date's going to be highlight, control one's going to be a date type. Just any date you can see. I usually choose the bottom one. The memo is going to be text, control one, text, the amount and balance are going to be decimal, control one, number, two decimal places. Then these this, these are going to be your allocating columns because each bank statement must be allocated a general ledger code must be allocated a name for now but you'll you'll extend them to have classes and jobs and all sorts of things eventually but not to confuse you we just start small so we're going to name this general ledger code id because it's going to take the number from the general ledger code table and this one we're going to name name id so this is going to take a number from your names table so, so the, gen, the, the id the allocating columns are always whole numbers so you select control one number whole number so there are next tables ready for upload make sure it's named table design we didn't name it so i'm just going to copy one of the most important mindsets for database rename copy the name rather than retype because you never know when you have spaces and all sorts of things you can make mistakes in a database to run properly everything has to be done exact it's a very exact type of i don't know if you can call it science or art so they renamed it so now we're ready we've we've named our table we've renamed our sheet we've changed our we've named our column headers with names that make sense we've got, we've got a naming convention which we'll discuss later on in, in the course We've, we've changed all the data types to upload it to a data model. Go to Power Pivot, add to data model. Now we've got three tables. We go to the diagram view. We've got our bank statements, we've got our names, we've got our general ledger codes. So I always put, you've always got different types of tables in the database. Your bank statements is your transaction table, I call it. And your allocating tables or, or lookup tables are these two here. I always like to put the lookup tables around the, the transaction tables. You just put them like this. So this is your transaction table. This is your allocating table. So this code from here is going to go into there on your table. And this code here is going to go into there. But you can't... We first have to put some dots. And otherwise it's going to tell us, you know, the, the, it doesn't want duplicate rows in your lookup tables. Which is, you understand later why. So let's go and copy general ledger codes. Let me just get my general ledger codes template and we just copy it in here quickly. So let me quickly go to my my little system. We are store my templates. Let's just export it quickly. Let's just call it a template. Doesn't matter where you, you just remember where you exported it to. So let me go and open that one that file I've exported now template okay let's just see the template needs another column notes let's just add notes so what's nice is as you add these columns that update your data model so let's just go and change name the, the data type again highlight the, the data type control one 
Make it a whole num uh, this will be text. Click OK. Let's click refresh. Data. Refresh all. Let's go and check our data model. See if it's got a notes column in here now. Power pivot. Manage. Diagram view. Notes is updated there. So you can see everything's you must get used to when you another mindset on database is constantly changing a database you can change anything so don't be afraid there's no set in stone when you set everything up so we're going to copy our general ledger codes template into here let's go and select them all control a control copy and it pays special value so it doesn't so it keeps the formatting of the table not not of a dot you copying in that's also another vitally important Thing. Let's just control Z because we don't want to uh, copy the, the headings as well. So let's just quickly re reselect our area. Control Shift down, Control C to copy. Right click, paste special. So it only takes the data, not the, the data types because it's vital that your data types are always correct. Let's just go and expand all the columns. So we've got our 200. 100, uh, 294 different general ledger codes that are ready now for allocation to our bank statement so let's just go and put some put some names in here let's just call let's just number this in sequence these are always numbered in sequence let's just call it name one just for demonstration purposes and just copy the name down control save so we've created our so as we've created our name, so as you need new names, you you just add them down the bottom here, and it, it takes the, the formatting down with it. So you can go to millions of rows like this, and you never have to change the formatting again because you're adding. You want to add another name? You want to add another one? You want to add another one? So so you go and as you need them, as you're going along. So the next thing you do on the database. Is you go to, to, to you go to create the joins because your reports come from pivot tables generated off these your data model from the tables that are joined. You go to manage diagram view. So we've got our bank statement transaction table, it must be joined to the general ledger code. So you join the general ledger code ID to the let's quickly see here. Okay, so it wants entries in the Let's just go and add some entries in the bank statement quickly. Let's just quickly go and get some generated bank statement entries, which I've got on a template as well. Let's go to my templates. Let me just go to the bank statements. If I would select them, 159,000 lines. Let's just quickly export them. F8. Uh, just give it a few seconds with big data let's just call it same file template save replace yes let's go to our downloaded template open it all right so now we've got i uh, didn't over let's quickly go and do it again let's just close this file here because we didn't have other template file closed sorry you you were going to make sure the file is closed let's go and export again it won't take long if F5, F8, just to get the get it exported. Same file, templates closed this time, so it'll override it. Let's go and open the template file. Double click it. Should be 159,000 bank statement entries, which it has got. So it's in the same sequence as our as our database. It's got to be date, memo. Let's just change the ID, cut, insert cut cells. So it wants the ID, date, memo, amount. Let's just take the balance out for now. Right, so now we're ready to copy it. Sequence we don't need. Let's take the sequence out of this one. Let's copy this whole 159,000 Control-C. Um... A special just the values as as always that is just expand the columns Let's just make this a bit narrower column with 50 so we can see our table 
So now I think uh, we're going to bank statement. So let's go and you must also use data refreshing all quite often. So your 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 whole database upsets up, updates itself all over. So let's go and try and create a join now. So we go to Power Pivot, Manage, Diagram View. Let's go and see if the join works now. Control. So it works. We've got our join to our general ledger codes. Now we must create join to our names. Name ID. So that's all we're going to do now for this video now. So just to give you a basic idea of what's an e what a database in Excel is. So you can see when, when it's properly formatted, your reports run smoothly, even if millions of lines, it can take unlimited data, billions of lines, which we'll go through as we go along in this course, because you, you optimize your database all the time according to your needs. You know, there's many ways you can optimize, which will go later, but example, your your bank statements you'd put on an external, if you, if you had 2 million lines, you put an external and connected externally via CSV connection only connection, but you won't understand all that now, but so let's just do a summary of, of what we discussed in this video. So the idea of the video was to give you a basic idea of what a database in Excel is. So it's made up of tables. Each table is in use, each name. These tables are connected in, in the data model. And from these tables, when you pivot off these tables, you can do, any, you generate any reports you need, statement of financial position, profit and loss, any accounting reports. But once you understand database with accounting, it's, other databases are, are very easy. And just as a bonus, when, when you understand database setup and design and modeling on Excel, it's very easy to move over to a program like, like SQL. You know, this is what I use all the time, but I, I, I spent 20 years on Excel learning the basics. And then I, I, to move over to this relational database management system and understand SQL was, was a very small uh, learning curve. So I think it's worth learning you know, Excel on, da on a database on Excel. And um, as I said, it's free. Y you can download to your accounting system, payroll system from here. We don't even need it. You're able to have your full accurate reports just on one file in Excel with everything in your life. So you know that mindset for databases. Get used to only opening one Excel file every single day of your life, which is called database or companies which has everything on it. So if you want to create a, a backup as well every day, you just click here, control, drag it. And in one second, you create the backups all there. So before I get too excited and rave about databases, let me end this video. If you like what you see, please click the like button below, subscribe to receive future videos, share this video with people you think might have use for it. And any comments, you can enter in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.